I'm going to be calling this video Nano VNA Tips and Tricks. And the reason that I'm doing that is, pardon the fumbling here, I'm having to remember where the uh, the switches are on these various uh, VNAs. This one I think is over here, yeah. And this one I think is up here. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so these are the three nano VNAs that I own. This is the original, sometimes called the H. This is the H4, and the 4 because it has the 4 inch screen and also some additional capabilities. And this, the latest one is this one on the right, which is the version 2. And I've compared these in videos, these two in one video, and this one with this one in another video. The first uh, tip that I <laughs> will give you, and you might also call this how to use a Nano VNA, but I call it tips and tricks, uh, is that you want to make sure that your uh, that you get a calibration set. Now, this is a calibration set over here. Usually, these will come with the three short, open, and load, and usually a little extender like this. But if your unit doesn't come with that, then I suggest that you, that, that's a little, that, that glare is a little too much. Let me turn that back off again. Uh, the, uh, if your Nano VNA doesn't come with a calibration set, I suggest that you get one at the same time you get the Nano VNA and preferably from the same manufacturer. The reason is these calibration sets vary. For example, the ones that come with many of these Nano VNAs only work up to about a gigahertz. Whereas this unit, for example, the, uh, the V2 works up to 3 gigahertz and it needs a calibration set that is uh, fairly accurate up to that higher frequency. Another thing is uh, the I suggest you get some little adapters. Now some people suggest that you get some adapters like this and put it on the ends of the unit to cut down on wear because of the fact that these do not, these uh, calibration standards do not rotate. In other words, when you're turning it, you're also turning the pin on the inside and it, it tends to bore out the uh, SMA connectors. Now, if you only pay 40 or $50 for the thing to begin with, you may not be concerned about that. But I do not recommend that you replace them with these. The reason is, while this will help in that after you have worn out the uh, this one, you can just replace it with another one and then wear that one out and so on, I suggest instead that you do what uh, I have done with this uh, H4, which is connect a set of cables and then if you want to put adapters like this on the ends of the cables that's fine. Why do I suggest that? Well mainly because I have heard enough horror stories about broken nano VNAs pardon the uh, sloppy camera work to know that most of the people don't really complain about boring out the ends. What they complain about is when you put a heavy connector, like an end connector, on the uh, on an SMA uh, device. Let me give you an example. Here is an end connector that hooks to an SMA on the other end. If you put something like this right up against the uh, the Nano VNA, and then you hook a big old coax cable to this, like an RG213 or something like that, you're more likely to break the connector off at the circuit board. So boring out the center may take 100 or 200 or 500 uh, repetitions, but it only takes one time 
with a heavy cable to ruin your nano VNA. So I suggest you put some flexible cables on it. So tip number one in summary is make sure you get the right accessories with your nano VNA including a calibration kit and any little adapters you plan to use but you should make sure you include a pair of flexible cables. Tip number two, get a nano VNA menu map for the, the nano VNA model that you have. Don't, get, don't ask a friend, don't just download a generic menu map. Actually go to the website where you bought the nano VNA and get their memory map if one didn't come with your nano VNA. There many times they send them along with it, but, but these maps are different. This one came with one of my units. This one came with another, and I will tell you there are 11 differences between this menu map and this menu map. So make sure you're getting the one for your Nano VNA. And a subpart to tip number two, go through the menu map. Try everything on the menu map. Learn how it actually works on your uh, VNA you'll find that it will help guide you as you go further along. Now, the, the last thing that I would like to talk about is a procedure that you can follow in setting up your Nano VNA. So that's going to be tip number three. So tip number three is have a procedure for using your Nano VNA. You don't have to be obsessive compulsive to get organized. And I suggest that you do this uh, procedure the first couple of times while having in front of you the menu map that we talked about earlier. Because I have found this procedure to be useful. You may decide a different procedure works for you. First thing I do is I set up then I calibrate, then I connect, and then I go through the rest of these steps, which we'll talk about. In the setup, the first thing I set up is the stimulus. That basically is either the start and stop frequency or the center frequency and a span. You don't have to use start and stop. For example, if you want to look at a 10 megahertz or a 10.7 megahertz filter, what you might do is use a center frequency of 10.7 megahertz and a span of, say, 500 kilohertz, because that will show you the bandwidth of a typical wideband FM filter. Uh, but you can also use start and stop frequencies. The next thing you should do is set up the traces. And we'll talk about that in a minute after we've been through the rest of this uh, process because setting up the traces before you calibrate, I think, makes things much, much simpler. To set up the traces, you need to decide for each trace what is the channel, what is the scale, what is the format, and it may be some other things as well. Now, let me... Uh, I'll talk about that in a second, but before I do, I want to talk about calibrating and why after you've done all this setup, you want to calibrate and you do that every time you do change the stimulus. If you're doing something that is calibrated and you decide you want to change the stimulus, you need to go back and recalibrate. And here's why. This shows a frequency spectrum and if you use the typical uh, frequency spectrum of the nano VNA H, the, the, the first or simplest of the nano VNAs, and you calibrate over that range, you're calibrating from near zero, actually 50 kilohertz, all the way up to 900 megahertz. Now suppose that you want to look at a signal in the 14 megahertz band, the 20 meter ham band, somewhere around the middle here, let's say. Well, your nearest calibration point 
is down here near 14 megahertz. Actually, it's a little above 14 because of the 50 kilohertz offset, but let's call it 14. And your next calibration point is way out here at 15 megahertz. And you have no calibration points in between. Where, because you only have 100 calibration points, so it has to do 100 over this whole 900 megahertz span. What you would like to do then is set your stimulus to this with either a stop frequency, a uh, start of 14, a stop of 14.5, or maybe a center of 14,250 and a span of half a megahertz, uh, half, yeah, half a megahertz. Then you're getting 100 calibration points in this same distance. So it's much more accurate. Now let's go back and talk about setting up traces. When setting traces, the first thing you should realize is that unlike an oscilloscope where everything is oriented around channels, a network analyzer is oriented around traces. Now, a trace is not exactly the same as an oscilloscope channel, but if you think of this as a four-trace instrument instead of a two-channel instrument, you'll, you'll uh, find, at least I have found, and when trying to teach others, have found that they understand better if you start with the idea that it's the traces that you want to set up. Now, traces can be enabled or disabled. That just means are they displayed on the screen. That does not mean the current selected trace. Now, you have to select a trace before you can change it. But you can select a trace and change it, and if you don't enable it, it won't appear on the screen. So up to four traces can appear on the screen of most nano VNAs. Now some of the very early models only had two traces, but I'm assuming yours has four, and they are normally color-coded yellow, blue, green, and red. So you have a trace number, you have whether or not the trace is enabled, in other words, does it show up on the screen, you have which channel is being displayed on that trace. You only have two choices, channel 0 or channel 1. Remember, channel 0 is used when you're trying to match things because you're interested in the, just the input impedance of a device or the output impedance of a device. Whereas channel 1 is used whenever you're doing a transmission measurement. In other words, something where you want to send a signal in on one side and read it on the other side and see how it changed as it went through this device or how it was transmitted through the device. The format can be a lot of different things. For example, it can be log mag, it can be phase, it can be delay, it can be a Smith chart or a bunch of other things. By the way, I point out, a Smith chart is just a point of view. Actually, all a Smith chart is, is a polar display of the log magnitude and phase over a period of, over a set of frequencies. Maybe we'll talk about that in a future video, but if you have a Smith chart, you don't need log mag and phase. If you have log mag and phase, you don't need a Smith chart. But one or the other might be the more convenient form. And then finally, you have to set up the scale. Now, the scale is the, the, the scale per division, like 5 dB per division, and, and then the reference level. I'm not going to talk about the particulars of this because it varies depending on your VNA as to how you go about doing this. But if you will take the menu map and you use it because often you have to go back and then go forward another path to do all these things. For example, to set up a trace you have to first make the trace you want to set up the active trace. That doesn't mean enabled, that just means the active one, the one that, that anything you tap on from here on it's going to apply to that trace. Then you set the channel, the format, and the scale. Then you, you uh, make trace 1 the active trace, and you do the same for it. 
enabled is whether or not the the trace has a back uh, has a highlight in its field. So for example, you set up trace zero, and when you're done, if you do not leave trace zero highlighted, it will not be enabled. So these are some tips that I have found useful over time. I think you will find that if you get yourself a uh, menu map, if you set up your traces first, that you will find that the rest of this procedure will go pretty smoothly. So now let's go back to our procedure. So we have set up the stimulus, we have set up the traces. Now you should calibrate. And remember, you should calibrate every time you change the stimulus. Then you should connect your devices. But you should connect your devices at the place you calibrated. So, for example, on this Nano VNA with these cables, the calibration points are out here at the ends of the cables. That's where you should connect the device, because that's where you calibrate it. In other words, when you put these standards on to calibrate, that establishes the plane of calibration. I'm not going to call it the reference plane. Some people do. But I want to keep that word reference to refer to the scale markings where you display the scale reference. So I'm going to call this the calibration plane. And that's where you should connect your device. Then you should make sure the traces you want to look at are enabled and all the others are disabled. Then you can move your markers, add markers, and record your results. I think you'll find that if you use this procedure, you won't get lost trying to figure out how to get from where you are to where you want to be. So I hope that this video will be useful to those particularly those who might be just starting out using a, a nano VNA. Now this procedure works for all of the nano VNAs that I own, and I think it works for all the nano VNAs, but your results will vary. And the best thing for you to do is get the right menu map for your device. And by the way, you can download one of these even if you don't own a nano VNA, just to find out more about how they work. Then, make sure you have calibration standards. And finally, follow a procedure. This is the one I suggest. And you'll find that you, you will not get confused about what you're seeing and why you set it up this way. Hope this has been a useful video. Or if not, at least you got a little entertainment value out of it. And in the future, we'll probably do some more on the Nano VNA. But in the meantime, stay safe, have a nice day.